All right, so as I was saying about this one, just making my direct adjustments, I noticed that the thumb here lines right up with the edge. And in design, we call that a tangency. It's fine when things go off the edge, but it's not, it's kind of uncomfortable when they're just touching there. It doesn't look intentional. So the way to fix that is to push it beyond the edge. And the way I'm gonna do that is take my copy layer right here, and I'm gonna circle around the thumb just a little bit. I'm gonna make a duplicate of it, Command J. And then I'm going to transform it and just push it off a little bit. I did it on a duplicate on a layer on top. Now I'm going to use my eraser, pretty soft edged, at 100% opacity. And I'm going to cut it away. Just nudge it into place. Okay, so it's starting to lose focus as it goes away from us, and it's very subtle. So that's that's what it was, and now this is what it will be. And that just won't distract us as much. Another area close to the edge, looking at edges is really important, is this little bit of dust here. I think I want to dodge that. I'm actually, instead of pushing it out and burning it down, I want to bring it out a little bit so it doesn't feel so simple. So I'm just going to brighten that up a little bit in the midtones helps bring the wing back up. I was on the wrong layer when I did that, so let me try that again. There we go. And you see the difference there? And then I can burn it just right at that edge, or it's just a little too bright. So it's not so distracting. The key is to get the viewer's eye to go where you want it to go, not to get hung up in distractions. Okay, so that makes a pretty big difference. Is there any other dodging and burning that needs to happen? I would like to bring out this hand a little bit more. So I'm going to burn a little of these core shadows. On the back edge. And I might do the opposite, or maybe actually I'll burn around them. Especially that white paper. they stand out a little bit more. My brush is a little small. I don't want it to start showing all my, my tool marks. Let me go a little bit bigger. Oh, and definitely a lot softer. Knock that back a little. Knock this back a little. This is 
is only a 5% exposure. Very subtle. Just in the mid-tones. Just deepening the shadows a little bit. Or the mid-tones a little bit. So that this foreground really comes through. Alright, that looks pretty good. Now I can use the dodge tool and do the same thing with any highlights. Really make this gold look shiny. I can just strengthen the highlights that my lighting established. But I want to be careful not to dodge the highlights directly. That's why I'm on mid-tones. I don't want it to go to pure white. The local color of this robot is black, so it's hard to differentiate its head from its shoulders here. So I'm going to dodge the mid-tones around. I'm going to reveal all that dust, robot dandruff. Then I'll use the burn tool in the mid-tones and I'll get the shadow side to help pop that out. See the difference there? So all these little tricks, just trying to, to bring out the most we can from our exposure without making it look over-processed. To me, the ideal ratio is about 80% of the qualities of the shot should be achieved in the exposure, and no more than 20% should be achieved through processing. Otherwise, you're just wasting a lot of time trying to save a bad exposure. Okay, now I'm going to save it. And this is going to be Carl. Depth exposure. This is the first in my sequence. One as a PSD to the desktop. So I have depth exposure two, depth exposure one, and I can merge that little thumb with it. So it all gets treated equally. just by selecting both and saying uh, command E or layer merge layers so it puts it all into one layer okay now I have vignetting from my lighting already maybe I need a little bit of that big vignetting over here so let me do that big burn tool just hit it a little bit in this corner There we go. Okay, now I've done my direct adjustments, my dodging, my burning, my clone stamping as needed. Now I can take these two adjustment layers, drag and drop them on top of this, and voila, it makes them match. All right? So now I've got two in a sequence that match, one to go. One, two, and now how do I make three just as exciting? Well, three is not actually supposed to be as exciting. This is the reveal. But there's a lot going on. How can I treat it all? Make a duplicate of it. Is there anything I don't want? Ah, these little things at the very edges. Let's take care of that. Edit, fill, content aware. I 
I guess I don't love this, but I don't think the the fill is going to help me as much. Let's see. Yeah, Content Aware works best when it's isolated on its own. You see, it brought in a lot of of this color into it. And no, I don't like that, so let me go back. So instead, I'm just going to take the top of it. Maybe fill in that little dot. I know this is picky, but this is our story we're telling. This is our expression. Okay, dodging and burning. I'm going to enhance the vignetting a little bit on my duplicate layer here. Remember, I'm always duplicating first. I have the slight reflection of my soft flash in the wall. I don't love that. So let me vignette to weaken that with the, the burn mid-tones. Mid I've got my sketches on my desk. I've got the frames up on the wall, but I actually don't mind that. I'm not going to get rid of it because enough of it's showing that it feels intentional. And it helps angle the perspective in into what's happening. You know, very soft. 0% hardness. Big brush for vignetting. You don't want it to look drawn on. You just want it to look natural. Even though I'm making a big difference there. Really focusing us in. Okay, next. The focus is sharpest on the robot, especially his foot. I like that. So let's bring that out a little bit. Dodging some of the highlights in that robot. Trying to avoid the brightest highlight. Core highlight here, I'll make them look nice and shiny. And I'll brighten up a little bit in this background. It's about revealing the truth. It's just a desk, just robots. I have my son's name on this little bracelet. Let's see. Can bring that out a little bit. Nice little details. Yeah, I don't think I need much more for this. I, I like how the clock becomes kind of a recurring character in it as well. It's like showdown at high noon. Wish the phone wasn't so boring looking, but you know, you gotta have a phone. All right, so those are my direct adjustments. What do I do? I take the adjustment layers from the other ones and drop it on. There I go. So now, hit F9, see them all. Yeah, let's pull this one out too so it gets a little bit bigger. Starts with this, goes to this, goes to this. That meets the intentions of my sketch. But maybe it's not the best I can do. So I want to see how I can strengthen it now. So let me save. Trying to remember my naming, my uh, naming convention. 